Welcome back to more High Fleet. We've got two ships I want to go through in this video, the Ballistic Replacements and the Boring Replacements, two very different roles, the Ballistic being a quite common garrison ship, so we'll be seeing a lot of these in the campaign, and the Bore being something you don't see quite as often, but does make up the core of a strike group. So this is a ship that you will see flying around or moving around the map rather than the Ballistic, which will be stationary. So keep that in mind when you're having a look at these ships. Think about the role that it's going to be playing for the enemy fleet. And uh, I'm sure you'll find some interesting choices here among the finalists. And thank you all for watching the first video as well and all of your feedback. It's been really, really good. But let's get on with it and I'll see you in a second with the first ship. So just as a starting point, here is the Vanilla Bore, just to get, the, sorry, the Vanilla Ballistic, just to get it into your head. Bearing in mind that it does by default come with an A22 MRL and it also has two Zeniths. The ship has a few other features. It has flares, which unfortunately the AI won't use, but they are there. And it's quite a cute little ship, actually. I like the armor set to it. It's well built. And uh, that is the ship to bear in mind when we're looking at the ships that we're going to look at just here. So the first ballistic that we have for your perusing is very squarely in the Punish for us for existing category uh, because Corazon Ray here has supplied us with the Dreamer, which is an aircraft carrier version of the ballistic. If you can imagine that pretty much every garrison might end up with an aircraft carrier, that's a pretty scary prospect. It is only mounting LA-29, so it doesn't have the massive reach that a T-7 has, but it's still four planes is a lot. Uh, it comes with a, F a tracking radar as well, which means it can utilize the two sprints that it is equipped with too, which will further decrease my ability to deal with other threats when I actually get into a garrison fight because of the support role. It is even armed, it has an AK-100, which isn't crazy, but it's the type of ship that I would probably end up ignoring for a while once we get into combat, and that might do some damage. Additionally, it will launch the planes if it gets into a situation where I manage to surprise attack, and those planes will continue to do damage as the combat goes on. So there's your first option. It is a ballistic that is an aircraft carrier. This is the Dreamer from Corazon Ray. For the sake of showing off everything, here's a very quick test battle with the Dreamer. Just to show you what it's like in combat, it's very unmaneuverable, it only has two engines. Um, and the AK-100 does what an AK-100 does. Um, it's not really going to do much. We can launch all the planes though, and that will do something. It's probably not going to last very long under fire from this slogger, to be completely honest. The lack of maneuverability makes it quite difficult to really effectively dodge fire with, and that's it pretty much destroyed straight away. Um, but that's the ship, that's it. We've lost one engine, so there's not really much we can do here. Uh, <laughs> but that is the Dreamer from Corazon Ray. So here we have quite a radically different version of the Ballistic, whereas before we saw a strategic option, this is definitely a tactical option. Um, spouting a primary armament the same as a Lightning with two AK-100s, that gives it a pretty nasty kick. And it also has six Zeths, putting it on par with a Flower or a, a Paladin in terms of its missile armament. It also has a reasonable amount of armor for such a small ship, and although laterally it probably won't move very well, the four engines will mean that it can boost upwards very quickly, which the AI will usually use as a way to dodge incoming ships. Shots. I can see this being a real thorn in my side if I had to fight up against it. So that's the Cot by Orange Elephant. And of course, here is a very quick um, test battle with the Cot. Uh, it's probably going to take these ships to pieces, honestly, with the amount of missiles it has. You can see that it's just able to command the battle space. As I suspected, it's not that great at rattle movement, but it is very good at. Um, oh, there you go. It, it just took them apart really, really quickly with the Zeniths. Didn't really need to see more than that. It's a very small ship, but hopefully that gives you a good idea. And there's some straightaway two choices. Do you want a tactical option for the ballistic or do you want a strategic option for the ballistic? That's what you need to start thinking about. Speaking of strategic elements and ruining Frost's day, here is the LRMA-5 four-prong Rockets Don't Make a Good Toast from Golden Floof. And this is designed completely to give every garrison a, a strategic missile option if they detect me on the way in. This will make my life incredibly difficult if it's um, voted for because it's ballistics in pretty much every garrison. So the moment it's armed with A100s and R3s, I'll customize that to be what the AI can use. Uh, that's fine, it doesn't really matter. It also has two Zeniths, it um, has a tracking radar, obviously, because it's got an IRST actually, which is really interesting. Um, and it has one AK-100, so it can actually do something in combat. If we look at the engines here, it has one D-30S and two D-30s, so it's not going to be particularly mobile, especially because those engines are center of mass. That's not really what its job is, though. Its job is to ruin my life with missiles before I even get into combat. Uh, so there's another strategic option for you if you're looking for something uh, a bit different. We've now got an aircraft carrier, a tactical combat ship, and a strategic missile carrier. Um, and these are all fitting into the slot that is held by the ballistic. 
um, the LRMA, LRMA5 4 prong Rockets Don't Make Good Toast by Golden Floof. And just because I can, here's a test battle with it. It's not going to last very long, I don't think. It's incredibly slow. Um, we can maybe take out one of these sluggers with our missiles. Yeah, and then it's going to try and duel this last one with its 1AK-100, which it can't It can't dodge any shots, and obviously it can't launch any strategic missiles in a tactical fight. There is a mod for that, which might make my campaign even harder. Um, probably don't want to do that, though. It's probably not going to win. It probably will win this fight because it's one slogger, but it's going to take a lot of damage doing it. And what might happen is we can't dodge this missile. That was a lot of damage. You can definitely see that if I manage to get into the garrison, this, sh this ship's not going to be a problem for me to deal with. I can probably clear it up very, very quickly. But that's not its job, and I can't really show off the strategic side of it in this test. But hopefully you get a decent idea of how it's going to operate. Our penultimate uh, ballistic design comes in the shape of the Frogfoot from the Supreme Patriarch. Boasting the same armament as the Cot, it's got two AK-100s and six Zeniths, but it features a very interesting elongated hull, which is looking to be some sort of side fighter with very heavily armored sides, not so much on the top and the bottom. I guess the idea is it's going to sit on the edge of the battle and do a lot of damage from there rather than getting too close. It does have a really distinct look to it, which I really, really like. It's very much going to be a close combat ship. It's also very fascinating to me that it has the same engines as well as the Cot, so seeing how they perform against each other will be quite interesting. So let's just quickly see how it performs in a battle. Um, in terms of maneuverability, its lateral movement is not fantastic, uh, but it, see the deceleration is not a deal. It's, it's probably gonna be a little bit more bulky, I would say, than our other options. But that heavy armor on the side might make a big difference. Also, that was a really nice missile strike. I had a lot of fun doing that. Let's see how it does against the actual other ballistic. Oh, this is the Navarin, actually. It's almost got it. Definitely has a nice profile to it. It's, it's very different from a lot of the other options. Um, just the, the, the low engines is the only thing that's concerning me about it. It's another really, really good option. And the last ballistic variant we have here is the Tochka from Zervizedska. I hope I said that correctly. This is another strategic element uh, version of the ballistic with a little bit more of a tactical role because it has the two 725 Vimples, which are a good gun, especially on mass. Um, it comes with two R3s, we'll have to replace it with KHs, but that's okay, that'll work out fine. One of the things that the d designer of this ship has gone for is by integrating a large fuel tank. It actually has quite a lot of range, which means it can potentially sneak out of a garrison a little bit further to try and just get a little bit more range on the strategic missiles. It actually also has quite a lot of armor, so once it does get into a tactical fight, it should last a long time and just continually chip away at armor and do some internal damage with its fit the 75 millimeter guns. So there's your other, your last ballistic option, the Tochka from o 0 z -tka. Hopefully I've got both of those words correctly. And here it is in a fight. I'm just quite keen to see if the armor does a lot of work for it or not. If it's going to be able to survive, kill these sloggers before they kill it is something I'm quite curious about. That's one slogger down. Don't underestimate the 75 millimeter guns against lightly armored ships. They are very good. We do have a little bit of a, of a issue here with the shots being blocked by the power cell. The ship is very slow, which has been a recurring theme for a lot of these ballistics. Nice to see. I'm always very happy when uh, people include um, fire suppressants in their ships, although the ship now is out of fire suppressants when you have one. The armor itself is doing a great job. It's the, the exposed underneath that has caused this to take a lot of damage here. This, this ship is very well armored. This will last a long time in a fight because I will not prioritize it. Okay, so that's that's the last option there for the ballistic, the Tochka. So moving on from our ballistics, let's have a look at our Bore submissions. This is the Humac from Sorose. The Bore is usually a light cruiser in uh, support groups or strike groups, and that's kind of the role that people have been building for here. Looking at this ship, I can already see a lot of things going on, which I really like in a high fleet ship. I like kind of a... a, a a, a wide uh, tactical ability and strategic ability to a ship rather than all being tied into one thing. So you can see we've got um, two missile launchers on the side, so there's a strategic missile element to it. It's got four zeniths. Uh, this will give a tactical group just straight away miss, um, long range capability. It's coming with an MR500 radar and an ELINT system, so it can detect enemies and come in 
hunt me down. We've got six D80 Molots, three on each side, which is a pretty hefty armament, as well as two A37s for anti-missile rolls. It does come with flares. Sadly, the AI won't use the flares, but if I get my hands on one, I will really like those flares. I'm not sure if there's any Palash. Let me just quickly check. There is no Palash on the ship, but that's not a problem. And this is your first Bore replacement. Um, again, this is the um, Sir Ose submission, I guess it's the word. All right, just gonna try out the Humag by Sir Ose in a quick test fight. See how those six um, miss, uh, main guns are gonna work for it. I'm gonna launch most of my missiles at this Archangel when I get a chance. Although I almost flew into that one. Actually, gonna take out a lot of stuff with uh, missiles here. Summers are pretty tough. I'm still alive. Right, let's see how we do against this Archangel. Having a little bit of trouble staying in the air. I'd say it's quite top, quite heavy. That's a bomb. That's pretty um, scary stuff. I was not expecting to get a bomb dropped to me. That did a ton of damage. It's the kind of thing I might be trying to do in the campaign. I wasn't expecting the AI to do it. Struggling a little bit here with the amount of damage we're taking. There's another bomb. That was not going to hit us. Very much, um, uh, I don't want to call it a bottom feeder, but it's hard to keep off the ground. Constantly having to boost upwards. Oops, hit the remains of that Courageous. Quite a fun ship to fight, actually. I feel pretty strong in the air here. Even, ooh, that was quite a nasty hit. That blew straight through. Got the Archangel, you see that missile tumbling? That was great. Got the Archangel firing frogs who set us now. Getting directly below a target with this ship opens up all six the main guns to fire. We weren't able to shoot that down. Okay. Well, that's hopefully a decent showing. Next Bore replacement, we have the Ifrit from Strawman. The Ifrit is coming at us with two double-barreled 180mm um, cannons on both sides of the ship, as well as a triangle of 37mm for anti-missile defense. We also have four Zeniths here. Um, it comes with a Mark Fi MR500 radar and two M2P21 Elims, um, so that it's got the full Elim range coverage because it's getting blocked, is why I assume the reason they've been added in there. Um, I think we may have some Palash in here, but they may not have been able to fit that in. Let's just have a quick look. Yes, there is six Palash mounted into the hull of this ship, giving it quite a lot of uh, survivability in addition to the heavy armor that is mounting as well. It looks like this ship can take a lot of damage. My only real concern with it is because of where the fuel tanks are placed, getting into a position where both of these guns are gonna be able to fire at a target at the same time probably isn't gonna happen very often. Uh, you're going to have to be basically directly above it for both the guns to fire. But apart from that, it looks very well armed, very well armored. It has some good support equipment to it, and I'm keen to see how it does in combat situation. Trying out Ifrit, uh, the straw, no, straw Man's Ifrit in a combat situation. I don't think it's going to last that long against the amount of targets that are coming for it, but we'll see how it does. Um, we'll just fire off some missiles at some other targets. I'd really like to do a lot of damage to that if we can. Also, don't want to shoot down my missiles. That would suck. Nice Palash protection there. The reload on the 180mm is a problem. That's the only thing I would say. It does take quite a long time, and the autoloader only holds two rounds. Also doesn't help if you just miss all the time. What you can do is split targets, though, because your guns will load independently. Biggest problem this ship, I think, has for me is I'm very bad at leading with 180mm rounds. They're just, they're just too slow for my brain to really map out very well. That's a good hit, though. Quite a slow measured ship. It feels very, very big and powerful. And the Palash is doing a really good job of keeping it quite well protected. Oh, I, sorry, I was too busy looking at the Palash to really line my shots up there. I could see this in a strike group with another ship, other ships backing it up, being a very good tank. Um, it definitely seems to take a lot of damage. But yeah, that'll be enough for that. That is the Ifrit from Strawman.
Here we have the Missile from Arsenius, um, a ship that on the surface looks like it is all Zeniths. You can see here we've got, what, four, five, six, seven, 14 Zeniths on this ship. But what I would like to draw your attention to is the fact that it also mounts three A220 MRLs, a weapon that I am miserable at using, but the AI can sometimes be very, very nasty with. Um, in order to support this, there is a lot of ammo in the chassis, um, but we do have a sort of a second inner layer of armor in an attempt to protect that, which is a really nice design feature. We also are coming in with the um, the MR500 uh, range kilometer radar, and we have two MP21 e lengths as well, so it still has that tracking capability. This kind of folded out design where there's like an engine behind an armor um, and some weapons, I, I really like that. Like It's like a compartmentalized component that can be lost as the fight goes on, but is there to start with. Um, a really interesting design. It's very rare to see someone take A220s and use them, and I think the, the Baker should be commended for trying to do that. So here's a quick test battle with the ship. I'm wondering how it's going to do against the Varag, but let's find out. Um, I'm just going to launch a lot of missiles to start with. We don't actually have any anti-missile weapons, so I need to watch out for that. The ship also has Palash, which I missed before. The sprints from the Varag are just causing me huge problems here. Let's fire off a barrage. We do actually have no more missiles. I tried to shoot at the wrong ship there. Definitely a weird ship. It's, I find it very hard to use the, um, the A220s in a, in a very aggressive way. Especially because of the weird, strange way they launch. But they do crush through armor quite nicely. And the reload on them is not too long. The biggest problem we have here is just waiting for that reload, however. There's nothing else the ship can do while it's waiting for a reload. So that's the missile from Osunis. A very interesting build. The amount of Zenith they can fire out is probably the biggest concern, at least at the start of a fight. And our last uh, ship in the Bore category is the M220 Boletus, another fungi ship from TRAM. You can see it has a very similar layout to the other one that was in with the Archangels. This has four AK-100s as its primary weapons with four um, 2A37s as a secondary. You can also see that it does mount Palash. The Palash, I think, is to protect the flying bridge here that has the radar on it. And we've got the two elins as well. Looks like a lot of people have taken the same detection um, capabilities that the original Bore had and, and ported them over to their ships. As before, this looks like a very, very powerful ship. We've got three RD-59s, which will make it a lot more maneuverable than you might think it should be. And it has a really nice armored hull to it. And also got a very, very high range with that large fuel tank. Okay, just finishing up with the test fight for the M220. The game does seem to really like to throw fire eggs at me, which I think should be maybe a testament to the how well it thinks these ships should perform. Um, the four AK-100s here are going to be really good against these lighter ships. I'm not sure how they'll do against the Varag when it shows up. We have a really nice anti-missile capability here. Taking a bit of a pounding there. The four AK-100s is a very nice armament. This does, is capable of drilling through a ship quite quickly. This gladiator would be a, quite a big problem especially because it's gotten below us, which is not where we like to get have gladiators, if we're being completely honest. The ship's quite heavy. It is definitely um, going to be hovering at the bottom, which is where it wants to be, with its palash and its... Um... Sorry, I'm getting distracted by the amount of fire that's coming in. Let's see if we can finish off this gladiator. It's a gladiator down. And yeah, that is the M220 Balletus. Um, not as fast or maneuverable as the Archangel variant, but still looking like it's pretty solid. You can see the amount of damage it's taken so far is not that high. And the addition of having the 37mm as missile defenses seems to make a big difference. Okay, so that's us through both the Ballistic and the Bore replacements. Those are the finalists for the final vote. There aren't that many more ships to go through. Uh, the big ones still need to look at really are the Varyag and the Nimrods because we forgot to do a rote vote for those. But apart from that, we're getting very, very close to the, the vote coming out and the campaign kicking off. Just want to thank you all for your patience, your really kind comments you've made on the last video. It's really nice to see. Um, and for those of you who've been reaching out to support me on my Ko-Fi, I really, really appreciate it. I'll make sure to put some thank yous in the end of my videos going forward for anyone who's done that because that is a huge deal and you deserve to be recognized for that. Unless you don't want to be, in which case I won't, put, I won't say your name. But thank you so much. Have a great day and hopefully I'll see you all soon. Ciao.